That light's really pink and it's kind of raining outside, so my apologies if there's any background noise. Hello and welcome to Exotic Beverage Reviews. This is episode 7 because I'm pretty sure it's 7. I can't count and I'm filming these out of order, so uh, it is what it is. Today's victim is Dr. Pepper Energy, which is made in Poland for some reason. Dr. Pepper is an American soda manufacturer that originated in Waco, Texas, that has been making soft drinks since the 1880s. The original Dr. Pepper drink has been made continuously since the 1880s, and it's a blend of 23 flavors, resulting in a unique medicinal and spicy flavor that's honestly never really caught on in Australia. In fact, most Australians are only familiar with Dr. Pepper at all because of... Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? And also because of... I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. But apart from that, Dr. Pepper is not something that you'll find in a convenience store or a gas station service station in Australia, unless it's in the import section and three times the price of anything else. So Dr. Pepper wasn't actually a doctor at all. He was a pharmacist and that might be splitting hairs, but when you're talking about adding an honorific to someone's name and maybe giving them something that resembles medical credentials, then it's important to get these things right. The stuff was invented by Charles Alderton, that's your Dr. Pepper, back in 1880 something. And the name was first used in 1885. There's a bunch of competing and honestly very boring theories about where the name came from. It may have been inspired by someone who employed Charles Alderton when he was younger. It may have been because Dr. Pepper let Mr. Alderton marry his daughter. That one's pretty compelling. It may have been completely unrelated and, and maybe just maybe due to the fact that the drink is kind of spicy and tastes a little bit like pepper, but I don't know. So it doesn't really make any claims. There's no room on the can for any hyperbole because the ingredients and health information are duplicated in both English and Polish. So yeah, not very exciting in the claims department. Uh, the, the branding's okay. It's kind of designed to look like the traditional Dr. Pepper can, the red can, is breaking through a wall of silver, which is, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's not bad. I have no complaints about the branding. The back of the can reads energy drink, high caffeine content, not recommended for children, pregnant or breastfeeding women, consume responsibly. Okay, the can contains water, sugar, carbon dioxide, taurine, which also gets top billing on the front of the can, color, specifically uh, caramel and ingredient E150D, citric, phosphoric and lactic acids, caffeine, flavorings, presumably 23 of them, but the ingredients don't specify. Should we dig deeper into that maybe? what those flavorings are? Yeah, yeah, we should. So according to the internet, which is never ever wrong, the flavor of Dr. Pepper is actually made up of cola, cherry, licorice, amaretto, vanilla, apricot, blackberry, caramel, pepper, pepper, anise, sarsaparilla, ginger, molasses, lemon, plum, orange, nutmeg, cardamom, allspice, coriander, juniper, birch, and prickly ash, which sounds like a pretty potent combination of things. The rest of the ingredients in the energy drink are inositol and a whole stack of B vitamins. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this so far given what the ingredients are, but honestly it's the 23 flavors that make up Dr. Pepper itself that scare me. I haven't had a Dr. Pepper, a normal Dr. Pepper, in many years, and I honestly don't really remember liking it, but we will see how we go. All right, it's pepper time. Give it a sniff. Yeah, it smells like what I remember Dr. Pepper sort of tasting like. Oh, it's definitely got that, that medicinal hint right under the surface there. Okay. Yeah, all right, it's, um, it's cola colored. Just looks like a typical cola. Nothing unusual there. I was kind of expecting it to maybe have a bit of a red tinge to it, but it doesn't, but that's okay. It looks fine. Uh, 
uh, down the hatch time, Dr. Pepper Energy. Ooh, okay. Definitely Dr. Pepper. It tastes like Dr. Pepper. That's a good start. It says that right on the can, Dr. Pepper. It's not super sweet <laughs> in contrast to the last review. Uh, it's not super sweet and it's it's a little bit dry in the way that you describe a, a, a wine as being dry, I guess. It's dry, it's earthy, it's medicinal for sure. Random noises. It's definitely got that medicinal thing. It's got all of, you, I'm not, I'm not going to say I can taste all 23 ingredients of the Dr. Pepper, but there's certainly elements of your anise and your, your herbs and um, those sorts of components. They're definitely present. It does have that scraped out of the bottom of a compost bin flavor that you get from B vitamins, which the herbs are struggling to cover up because they've got a very similar flavor. You can't really cover up B vitamins with herbs because it's kind of fighting fire with fire as far as flavor goes. But look, it's... It's not bad. I know I seem to say in all of these reviews that there is some consistent part of these drinks that I always end up disliking, whether it's the artificial sweeteners or the, the flavor of anise or something like that. And there are a lot of things in this that I fundamentally don't like, but on a whole, the drink is okay. Like it's, it's, it's perfectly acceptable. I shall have some more. Yeah, it's decent. I think it's a little more cola than normal Dr. Pepper would be. It's got a, it's probably the extra caffeine and the, um, the, the B vitamins and the her the sort of lower level herbs because um, cola, at least to my mind, has a, a fairly sort of earthy quality to it. Whereas Dr. Pepper, uh, the original Dr. Pepper tends to lean more towards that medicinal uh, aniseed licorice sort of flavor. But yeah, that's, it's not a fail. Go Dr. Pepper. The verdict is I'm pouring myself some more, so that's usually a good sign. Uh, it's it's fine. It's not my favourite. It's certainly not the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth as far as energy drinks go. It's um it's all right. It's good. This was an import, so again, it cost me a small fortune to buy. Uh, I probably wouldn't buy one again at that price, but if it showed up somewhere for you know the normal price of an energy drink, something competitive with the rest of the market, yeah, it's fine. Okay, given that it has such huge billing on the front of the can here, we're going to look at taurine. This may put you off energy drinks forever. If that's the case, I'm sorry, but I was going to save taurine for the inevitable review of a flavour of Red Bull at some point in the future, but let's just do it now. Get ready, strap in. This is going to be unpleasant. Taurine is an organic compound found in animal tissue, and it's a major constituent of bile. Bile, if you're not familiar with it, is a liquid created in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and ultimately ejected into the duodenum to help break down fats in food. If you've ever had the misfortune of vomiting, the acidic component, and dare I say the, the flavor of vomit, is predominantly bile. There is some legitimate argument that the reason that taurine is so effectively absorbed into the digestive system and acts quite quickly as a stimulant and a health supplement is because it's already partially digested to begin with. So it's called taurine, which comes from taurus, ancient Greek for bull, because it was first identified in the bile of an ox. While taurine can be extracted from actual bile, it's generally synthesized for use in things like energy drinks. So it's not really actual vomit, but once again, I think we're splitting hairs. Taurine is artificial vomit, and I'll have no further discussion on the subject. As far as its actual role in biochemistry, it's an antioxidant, and it has some role in cardiovascular function in the operation of various other bodily systems, so it can be useful to you. As of 2008, scientific papers have pretty much written off taurine as having any real purpose whatsoever as an ingredient in energy drinks, once again establishing that the incredibly tiny amounts of these chemicals found in these drinks are largely inconsequential. And if you think that you legitimately need any of these chemicals in your life for your health, you should probably consider seeing a doctor or a dietitian rather than something from the refrigerator in a bodega. So that was Dr. Pepper Energy with all of the 23 flavored goodness of Dr. Pepper plus 
energy. If you liked the review and you think you might need some more of my questionable opinions in your life, then you might want to consider hitting the subscribe button down there somewhere. And please stay tuned for next time when I try very hard not to read the can before I drink something because knowing what's inside very rarely makes things any better.